CEE Central Europe Explained An IDM podcast series powered by Erste Group Episode 55 Schengen Welcome to Central Europe Explained. I'm Sophia Beiter and I will be your host for this episode. Today's topic is about one of the most significant achievements of European integration, the Schengen area. While Croatia joined the Schengen area on January 1st, 2023, Romania and Bulgaria, despite meeting all requirements, are still waiting for their full accession. This delay is due to a veto by Austria, even though the European Parliament and most member states support the enlargement. In March 2024, some progress was made with the establishment of Air Schengen for Bulgaria and Romania, which removes border controls at air and seaports, but not at land crossings. In this episode, we'll explore the implications of Air Schengen and the broader impact of delaying full Schengen accession. We'll also discuss current challenges, including increased migration flows and internal border controls within the Schengen zone. To help us navigate this topic and better understand the current situation, I had the opportunity to interview two distinguished figures. His Excellency Emil Hurizianu, Ambassador of Romania, and Her Excellency Desislava Naidenova Gospodinova, Ambassador of Bulgaria. Let's start with the concept of borders. I asked our guests what comes to mind when they hear the words border, Schengen and European Union. Freedom, including freedom of movement, to travel across borders without physical borders and limitations. But at the same time, by not being able as a Bulgarian citizen to experience the advantage of the full Schengen membership in its entirety, an association with the queues at the border crossing points is inevitable. Well, the three terms you have mentioned border, Schengen, European Union, are actually a set of paradoxical contradictions. Uh, Schengen is a specific European way of enabling more freedom of movement while drawing borders, Schengen borders. And still, the sense of Schengen is lifting the borders, internal borders, and creates a space of freedom while strengthening the external ones. Uh, the European Union is a space of freedom within limits, a space of um, variable geometry with elastic contours. I uh, read um, recently um, an article by Agnes Chanchara, de-bordering and re-bordering the European Union after the Russian invasion of Ukraine, who uses the concept of EU's de-bordering and re-bordering in order to explain the new enlargement dynamics. Setting borders uh, to enjoy all the benefits of freedom of the European Union might sound like a paradox, but this is Schengen. Uh, coming back to, to your uh, question, Sofia, the first thing that comes to my mind is that the European Union is based on the free movement of goods, services, persons and capital. Next, I asked them to share a personal memory related to borders before their countries joined the European Union. Here's what they had to say about how their perspectives on life and opportunities changed after joining the EU. While I was a student in Bulgaria, uh, I have decided that I want to study abroad. Back then, there were very limited options for student exchanges between universities, so I have decided to apply by myself. After my successful admission, I needed to apply for a student visa. I remember the feeling when traveling to have to pass through separate lanes under the sign non-EU. The membership to the EU was a strategic goal a foreign policy priority supported with full consensus by all political parties and a dream for the majority of the citizens. With the membership to the EU, that dream of reunited Europe, of belonging to the European family, and the promise of freedom, which symbolized the fall of the Berlin Wall to many of 
that Europeans who lived behind the Iron Curtain felt accomplished. I um, came to the West, uh, Western Europe. I came to the Western Europe as a political um, a refugee in 82 after um, scholarship in Vienna, a head scholarship in Vienna in 82 with the University of Vienna. I spent one year in um, Vienna uh, with the university, um, being an alumnus of the Faculty of Law in Romania, in Cluj, in Transylvania. I tried to, with my Romanian passport, which was by the time very limited, I tried to travel to Italy for Easter, to Germany for Christmas, it has been impossible. Uh, so there were several um, hindrances. The first one, having a Eastern European passport and uh, a valid for leaving Eastern European country, in my case, Romania, but not able to enter any Western country with this passport. Then asking for political asylum and go getting it in, um, in 83 in Munich in, in um, West Germany. I remember trying to travel to France, to the US, to Italy, to Austria, every time with this uh, Geneva Convention 1951 passport for political refugees, I had to get a visum. This visa was almost impossible to get. Queuing up for hours in the Austrian consulate in Munich, in the French embassy or consulate also in Munich, and so on and so forth. So I remember again with my new uh, Romanian uh, uh, passport after 1990, trying to travel to uh, Austria. That was almost impossible. At least one week you had to queue up uh, in order to get to get a visum. In March 2024, Bulgaria and Romania saw the establishment of Air Schengen. I asked our guests about their experiences with this partial implementation and who benefits from it. Regarding the lifting of the border controls at the internal air and sea borders, all the necessary measures to ensure the smooth functioning of the so-called Air Schengen have been undertaken. In addition, compensatory measures to address any possible risks in this regard have been effectively applied. So, as of 31st of March 2024, the lifting of the border controls went smoothly and so far is functioning well. The decision of December last year brought real benefits to the citizens, especially for those traveling regularly by airplane. These benefits are tangible and visible by not having to pass through passport controls. It saves time and by not having to pass through separate lanes or sometimes even separate terminals under the sign non Schengen. Still, to the economy, these benefits are to a lesser extent, and it remains of great importance not only to the Bulgarian economy or to the Romanian uh, economy, but to the European economy overall, the full-fledged members of both countries, Bulgaria and Romania, also by land borders. Air Schengen uh, has been very well received by the Romanians. There was a, a very creative and inspired uh, semi-solution by the Austrian government, but the Germans um, let uh, Austria uh, wait uh, uh, at least two years, I think, or at least one year for Schengen uh, accession. And uh, Austria applied the same treatment, so uh, beginning only with the air Schengen with Slovakia, many years ago, it has also, this measure, it has also clearly increased traveling to Romania and it favored tourism. So that was a big step forward. While Air Schengen is a step forward, there are concerns it might delay full Schengen accession. I asked the ambassadors whether they see this move as positive progress or a potential setback. Um, 
it was the right step in the right direction, but it uh, exposed somehow the deficit. So the the uh, the accession to the Schengen perimeter space um, uh, um, on the earth, so to speak, uh, is still uh, is still uh, in the air in the air. So um, it's okay to have uh, to have it hap happening in the air and on the water, but um, uh, let's um, remain, stay with uh, um, the fits with, uh, uh, based on the earth. And we're waiting for, for the last step to be done. Apart from the benefits to the citizens, tourism or culture, I would like to point out to another important aspect of the decision of December last year. With this decision, Bulgaria became a member of the Schengen area, applying it in its entirety, apart from the land border checks, and an equal participant in the discussions on the future of the Schengen area. As an external border country, Bulgaria has both the experience and the expertise when we talk about the challenges we face in the Schengen area. So the solid foundation to finding solutions to the challenges we face is with Bulgaria being part of these discussions. So the decision of December last year was an important first step in the right direction that needs to be followed by the final decision on lifting also the land border controls. Next, I wanted to find out how the Schengen issue is perceived in Romanian and Bulgarian society. I asked our guests if it's an important topic for their citizens and whether the delay in full membership fuels anti-European sentiments or strengthens nationalist forces. The Schengen is um, a leading political priority and uh, an issue of great importance to the Bulgarian citizens. It is a matter of credibility uh, of the EU because Bulgaria has fulfilled all the necessary requirements. It is a matter of equal treatment and right. It is about feeling the freedom of being European in its entirety. According to all Eurobarometer surveys, the majority of European citizens rank the free movement as the greatest achievement and the most positive result of the EU. The Schengen area is one of the pillars of the European project and is essential in the framework of European citizenship. It is a tangible proof of European integration and a tangible manifestation of European way of life, uniting Europeans across internal borders. The postponement of the full membership to the Schengen area is neither a cure nor a prerequisite for finding the necessary solutions to the challenges we face. It fuels to the Euroscepticism and to the sentiment of having two class society in the EU. It also imposes real costs and has a strong negative impact on trade, tourism, environment, connectivity, competitiveness in the EU, to name but a few. For example, the direct losses, including for heavy transport and for producers and exporters, are estimated to more than 400 million euro yearly. Uh, there, there were already attempts by certain eurosceptic political segments in, in our country to use the v veto and uh, thus uh, fuel dissatisfaction with the uh, EU as such. This has worked to some extent. Uh, and nevertheless, our society is still fundamentally pro-European and we are both, I think, um, happy, uh, not only in Austria or in Romania actually, but in Europe, everywhere, uh, uh, since we witness um, the rather encouraging uh, pro-European, pro-Western, pro-democracy and freedom uh, the results of the European elections in um, in this summer. So, um, well, it's uh, it, it is a bitter, still a bitter taste. But the idea that you can fly between Vienna or and Bucharest, between Bucharest and Paris to to I don't know to Hamburg, to Berlin without without showing your passport and without 
without incidents, actually. The, 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 there are no problems. The only one problems of this Schengen issue are actually the queues 10 or 15 kilometers at the Romanian-Bulgarian borders. This is a problem, not only for the Romanians or the Bulgarians, for everyone, because in the queues you can see the trucks of the, of the Austrian companies who get to their, to their destination much later and with much higher cost than necessary, than needed. Why is full Schengen accession so crucial for Romania and Bulgaria? It means finalization of the European integration process and finally breaking the remaining physical barriers. Bulgaria has met all the necessary requirements 13 years ago. This was acknowledged on many occasions by all the European institutions and the member states. Schengen membership is a right. It is neither a privilege nor a gift. And Bulgaria's rightful place is in the Schengen area. Full, full Schengen membership has uh, two uh, uh, perspectives. Uh, uh, firstly, it is a matter of fairness. It is a matter of being equal with the other EU citizens and benefiting from the same rights. Um, for the average Romanian citizen, it seems like we have to fight for a right that others receive, received with ease. Secondly, it is about economic and climate protection. Every single day that passes by without being a full Schengen member entails additional costs, as I've said, for the Romanian, Austrian and other companies which are running businesses in, in Romania. One has to know that the Schengen veto has directly affected Austria and the Austrian companies in Romania. We have, um, uh, then last but not least, full Schengen accession means less CO2 from the cars and trucks that have to queue up for long hours at the, uh, for the border controls. Only through full Schengen membership will the Romanian Austrian bilateral uh, economic relations uh, achieve its full potential, thus achieving together a strong and resilient um, uh, Europe economically and, um, and uh, financially. To continue, I asked our guests how they think other EU member states, and especially the overall security framework of the EU, can benefit from the full Schengen membership of Bulgaria and Romania. The effective functioning of the Schengen area is a common European endeavour. Bulgaria actively contributes to this common goal by effectively managing and protecting the EU external border, preventing illegal border crossings, reducing migratory pressure and secondary movements, and fighting migrant trafficking and trans-organized crime. As an external border country, Bulgaria is the key guarantor for the security of the Schengen area. Our full accession to Schengen will allow us to relocate and focus our efforts and capacity where they are needed the most. Apart from the security implications, the full membership will bring benefits also to the citizens, business, consumers, tourism, environment, and to the overall competitiveness in the EU. Transporting goods without multi-hour delays at the borders will save time and money both for carriers and for entrepreneurs and trading companies, which brings benefits also to the final consumers. By hindering the free movement of goods between member states, such delays not only bring about lost benefits and loss in competitiveness to the EU single market, they also have a significant environmental impact. We have invested more than 1 billion uh, euros in a state-of-the-art border surveillance system. We have one of the best systems and aerial surveillance or of all the EU member states. Uh, your Minister of Interior, Mr. Conner, had the possibility to visit with our uh, migration centre of the border police in Bucharest, which looks like a, a NASA facility. 
moreover, the Romanian border policemen are actively participating in Frontex missions, are very appreciated by the European colleagues. I can confirm that the investments in border protection that Romania has made, um, as well as uh, the well-trained border policemen, make us a, a net contributor to the security climate in the EU. R R Romania uh, extended in uh, March the pilot project conducted in cooperation with the European Commission at the border with Serbia. This project had, has already led to excellent results, reducing illegal flows at the border with Serbia by 97%, which means almost zero illegal migration at this border. Moreover, at the most active border between Romania and Hungary, there is a decrease of 83% in July 2024 compared to July uh, 2023 regarding the number of tentative or illegal border crossings. Overall, the illegal migration, uh, migration pressure in Romania has decreased significantly on all borders, becoming practically irrelevant. Three on sea, 16 on air, which in fact are returns under Dublin regulation, and 27 on the border um, of the Republic of uh, Moldova. Uh, uh, based on these figures, anyone can see that Romania is fully and responsibly protecting the EU external borders. Additionally, Romania is among the, uh, the nine member states for which the European Commission will provide comprehensive support for all building blocks of the national implementation plans, part of the European Migration and Asylum Pact, which is to be approved by uh, December. That's why I'm, I'm looking forward for the new com uh, uh, Austrian Commissioner for Internal uh, Affairs and uh, Migration, Markus Brunner, to take up his position and confirm Romania's contribution to the EU security framework. Lastly, I asked the ambassadors about their expectations for when Bulgaria and Romania might achieve full Schengen accession and the role of regional cooperation in this process. Our goal uh, remains to have a decision for lifting the border controls at the internal land borders by the end of this year. And we will continue to work and collaborate with the EU institutions and all our EU partners towards the same. I would like to believe that next year, 2025, we will all be together celebrating the 40th anniversary of Schengen with Bulgaria and Romania being full members in it. I hope um, that politicians um will put aside their short-term political interests um, and that uh, they will admit what the European Commission uh, has been advocating since uh, 2011. Romania meets all the requirements to be a full Schengen member. And that Schengen and migration are two different issues whereby Romania, as far as fighting illegal migration is concerned, is part of the solution and not of the problem. I cannot um, emphasize this often enough. Romania and Austria have a wide range of common interests and continue to have similar position, positions on a number of European and regional issues, such as the priority granted to the EU in large process or our cooperation within the framework of the EU strategy uh, for the Danube region. Then. The cooperation between our ministries of internal affairs had led to significant results. Our bilateral efforts articulated with the solutions implemented at EU level have been translated into a consistent a reduction of migration pressure and of the asylum applications in Austria. Then, our terrestrial accession to Schengen would generate positive results for our bilateral economic cooperation, 
facilitating the mobility of our economic agents would also ensure the unity of internal market and enhance European competitiveness. The increased potential for the developing our bilateral relations based also on the significant Romanian community in Austria, which, as you might know, is the second largest community of EU foreign nationals in Austria, not, uh, after the German community. So we are around, there are around 130, 40,000 Romanian citizens working in Austria, with 35,000 probably only or even more in Vienna and around Vienna. And um, uh, well, the, after your statistics, after the Austrian statistics, uh, uh, the Romanian community is one of the best uh, foreign uh, community, integrated foreign uh, community. In this context, our objective uh, is to have a decision on the full accession of Romania and Bulgaria to Schengen by the end of this year. Before we say goodbye, at the end of each episode, we traditionally recommend a work of art related to the topic we addressed. On this occasion, I would like to recommend more than just one single piece of art. In fact, a whole museum that has been dedicated to the history of the Schengen Zone and the impact that the Schengen Agreement has had on Europeans' lives and its effect on the world. It is aptly located in Schengen, Luxembourg. Perhaps the most interesting aspect of this museum is the immersive experience it gives its visitors. Not only can one have guided tours and educational activities within the museum, but you are also afforded the opportunity to explore the city itself with an immersive experience taking place within the city. Guides provide insight into the Schengen agreements and share special anecdotes with visitors about the city as you walk through it. Unfortunately, it is closed for renovation until June 2025, but I think it is worth it to keep it in mind if you're interested in the topic. You can find the link to the official website on the show notes. Thank you for joining us in this episode of Central Europe Explained. The Schengen area represents more than just open borders. It embodies trust and solidarity among European nations. The journey towards full accession for Bulgaria and Romania continues, and with it, the promise of a more united Europe. Stay tuned for more insightful discussions in our upcoming episodes. Until next time, I'm Sophia Balter. This was CEE, Central Europe Explained, a podcast series produced by the Institute for the Danube Region and Central Europe. If you enjoyed listening to us, make sure to subscribe to the IDM podcast series on your favorite podcast platform. Additionally, you can explore our other work on our website www.idm.at. If you have any feedback or if you're interested in collaborating on a podcast episode, please do not hesitate to contact us through our social media channels at IDM Vienna or write us an email to idm at idm.at. IDM Podcast. Institut für den Donauraum und Mitteleuropa. Institute for the Danube Region and Central Europe. European Perspectives. Regional Actions. Cooperation and Expertise since 1953.